Welcome to Vlad TV. We have Memphis owned LaChat in the building. LaChat, what up, girl? And I'm back. LaChat, hey. you back. You killed it last time <laughs> with Vlad. <laughs> you, I mean, not too many people get these return engagements right away. Yeah. So you did your thing last time. I feel special. <laughs> okay, before we get into it, I got to ask you this. That name, it's a fly name, LaChat. It just kind of rolled off the tongue. Where did that name come from? I really don't know. That's what I was trying to think. Um, I started off calling myself Octomo, and then I was calling myself Cha-Cha. And then uh, my real name Chastity, so I think I just started saying Chat. And then I know where the L.A. come from. You know, so many L.I.L.s everywhere. So I didn't want to mm -hmm. do that. So I made the L.A., made it pronounced the same, but spelled different. And so it's still pronounced a little chat. And I think I took the chat from Chastity. Got you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I always wanted to ask you that. I mean, it's a fly name, though. <laughs> Thank you. We got to get into it. Um lot going on in your world, in your cruise world, versus, uh, first and foremost, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Let's go with it. Let's go. Come on with it. Before we go there, just give me the vibe in the building. Like, what was it like before, before the verses even started? What was it like? Was y'all hanging out? Just give me the feel for it. Well, before I started, we all was amped up. You know, we was ready to do a show. We was ready to entertain the people. And we all was happy. We all was drinking. We all was having fun. And it was a good vibe. That's how it was. We didn't expect nothing other than to go out here and put on a good show, entertain the people, and make everybody be talking about it, but not talking about it in the way they're talking about it now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we did want to do that. We did want to, you know, to make it to be the best verses. Okay, yeah, everybody want to make it the best verses. 3-6 Mafia, um, Bone Thug, they got a lot of history. It's a little rocky at times, but from what I understand, everybody was cool. Like, backstage, did y'all get to interact with them at all? Did you get to go and hug them and what up? I ain't seen you in years. Like, what was that like? Well, in the, when it first started, we didn't get to see them, you know. But we didn't think we had to do all that because we already been doing shows with them over the years and, and stuff, you know. So we really didn't think that we had to go meet and greet. You know, we all thought it was just all love, which it is all love. But, you know, we'll talk about it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know, it became apparent watching the verses. I'm just a fan. You know, I love 3-6. I love Bone. But just watching it, 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 it almost seemed mismatched to me because 3-6 got a lot of up-tempo, crunk-type joints. And just going back and forth, Bone was just, you know, they got hits for sure. Yeah. But they slower. You know, it's a whole different tempo. So where was you first and foremost? Are you standing on the side of the stage? Are you up there feeling the energy? I know how it felt as a spectator, but how did it feel for y'all being right there in the middle of it? Well, I feel like they put 3-6 Mafia and Bone together because really back them, back them days, they really was the only two groups groups that was really putting it down, you know, because Bone Thugs and Harmony, they had their thing going on. 3-6 Mafia had their thing going on, whether it was slow or fast. You know, they all both was good groups back in back then, back during the time. Now me, I was in the back trying not to be seen, trying to, you know, be the surprise guest. And I didn't have a clue what was gonna go on or what was going on. But I was in the back and then all of a sudden, I heard somebody say, Chat, chat, they fighting, they fighting. I said, they doing what? Wait a minute. So, I, who thinking this? <laughs> I'm in the back, uh, Pat in the back. You know, the, the back was full of people. Y'all think it was a lot of people up front. It was way too many people in the back. So, I'm like, they doing what? So, I come up running in. I'm talking about people just going everywhere crazy. So, I'm like, what they trying to do? They trying to fight. You know, 
keep in mind, I ain't, I want on stage. I'm too busy trying to hide in the back, trying to be the special <laughs> guest. I'm back there drinking on the Ciroc and everything. I'm I'm really back there having myself a good time. I ain't expecting none of the chaos. So I get up there. I'm really thinking like, nah, what they doing? I'm thinking that it's a little breakup fight. And like, oh, we're busy through something and juice. I'm like, for real? Oh, um, man, they flawed. They showing out in front of the cameras. You know, we've been doing shows with these folks. And, you know, it was just a big chaos. I did not know a fight went on until uh, I got really after the show. And I went back to my hotel room and I got on the internet. And I started looking. I said, wait a minute. All this went on? Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, I'm back here hiding, trying to be uh, secretive. My group up here fighting. So that's a good thing that I wasn't up there because I ain't going to lie. I would have been fighting too. You would have been in it? I promise you, they would have been getting hit with microphones and everything. We ain't with all it. I'm just going to keep them on it. So it was meant Yo. for me to be in the back. <laughs> so you telling me when all this went down, you literally had no clue what was going on? No clue. I'm like the person that come out the, after the fact. You know, I come and I'm thinking that it was just broke up from, you know how people be finna fight and they holding you back type stuff. That's all I thought I am because I'm like, oh, what they doing? You know, what they want to do? What's going on? All the time, my whole broad and broke out. I didn't even know. So I'm like, oh, they trying to fight. Oh, they wrong for that. They showing out. They flies. I had no clue that it went down like it went down, down. Damn. You know, Gangsta Boo, she was like, her and DJ Paul was on the side of the stage. On their side. <laughs> it's not like they crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> and they they didn't violate and they were according to her she was like we was waltzing you know kind of like slow dancing on the side of the stage she didn't think that it was offensive and they didn't do it in a way to try to be disrespectful it wasn't offensive you know that's what we like to do you know members people we like to have fun we like to make things interesting, you know. We like to pick a little bit, but we didn't think that it was going to make somebody mad, mad, mad. Whatever they was doing, they was doing it out of fun and laughs, you know. Not to make anybody mad, not to, you know, insult nobody or anything. So it was just out of fun and laughs when they were serenading. And, you know, and then they mm -hmm. was on beat. They was on beat yep. when they was doing the dance. <laughs> so I don't see why, you know, why, why they got mad for us, you know. Now, nah, Busy Bone, he stopped in the middle of his thing, and he's like, yo, yo, I'm ugly. And I'm, because <laughs> I want to emphasize on that. He just didn't call him Mother Effers. He was like, y'all ugly Mother Effers ain't going to be mocking me while I'm up here on this stage. I don't know where the tension could, that's why I'm asking, like, even before all this started and jumped off, was it some type of tension because I don't think that just being in that moment at that second, he could have got that ticked off from them up on stage slow dancing. For real. So I don't know. I'm like, boo, he must not take his pills. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know where it come from. Like, for real, we really have actually done shows with these people and never had a problem. And it was crazy. You know, he called them ugly motherfuckers and, you know, off them dancing. Now, yeah, it, okay, now, here's it, and, and Vlad interviewed Crunchy Black, okay. and I agree with Crunchy a million percent, but I get it. Busy came out his mouth disrespectful, and Juicy responded back, suck my dick. I don't know that you say that to another man. Right. Like, Dobbs is fighting words. He, well, he, you know, the comeback is real. He yeah. said what he want to say. He said what he said and did what he said. You know, it ain't no rules in what to say. When you get to call somebody ugly motherfuckers and all that, you got to be ready for the comeback now. It ain't no rules in the comeback world. Yeah, but that's a, that, that comeback is like, we ready to go to war. You tell that to another man, that's... This just got real. You call somebody an ugly motherfucker too, you just got real. So what's the difference? You <laughs> ugly motherfucker like, oh no, if I just up and got my hair done and nails done and all this, you calling me an ugly motherfucker? Somebody, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, how it <laughs> from, from what I understand, Busy originally, he wasn't even trying 
to throw the water bottle. He was just trying to wave water. Nah, nah. It don't look like he was trying to wave water. He was waving water hard then, one. He was waving some big yeah, ocean it, wave. It, it had the <laughs> nah. It had the cap. It had the cap on the water. No, that so, bottle went voom. I ain't seen not no sprinkles. I ain't seen no splashes. I ain't even seen no drips. I saw a whole bottle in there. No, the, the whole bottle definitely <laughs> went flying. And I'm glad it ain't hit nobody. Matter of fact, did it hit anybody? No, nah, I didn't hit nobody, but, you know, it was on from there. Yeah, no, nah, it definitely was on from there. The fight broke out. From from our vantage point, we couldn't really see. It just looked like straight chaos. It looked like Roy U. Rumble, like the WWE or something was happening up there. Yeah, and, and to be honest, none, no hands or none would have been thrown if none would have never been thrown. Now, that's when you cross the line. Forget the words. Now, they say, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words may never hurt me. That's what I'm saying. Words may never hurt you. But when you get to throwing stuff, sticks and stones and waters and bottles and all that, you trying to hurt me and it's on. No, nah, you're right about that. Like, as <laughs> soon as that bottle flew, that was it. The, the, the line was crossed. I started seeing dudes coming. Like, <laughs> it was a lot of people Boy, on stage. you had Caprida, but... You had Ray. You had, oh, Lord, Country Mike. First of all, you saw DJ Paul come like Superman. Woo. Mm -hmm. He was the first one. <laughs> and then, you know, you had to think about it because, you know, he is a boss. And he is lawsuitable but at the same time. So, you know, I think he kind of th thought about it for a minute. And then, you know, that's when all the other goons just came out. And it was Caputo, it was Ray, it was Countryman, and, you know, I don't know who else was coming in, who else was on their side, but... It looked like Memphis a football team ran up on it on that stage. It just was all kind of people. The crazy part about it, once I did see the fight, I got mad. I said, what? <laughs> Lord, and that's how I first my brother said, my brother said, I knew you weren't up there. Cause you would have been in the fight, <laughs> you know. Yo, it, it, you know we didn't have plenty of club brawls. I don't care. We it, it's just hey, I ain't no one on ones. And, and if I gotta fight dudes, whatever, it's one dude that my dudes and them gotta fight. It's gonna go down. And it didn't went down like that. That's just how it go. So you follow the street rules. If my boys is in it. I'm in it. I don't need to know who's right, who's wrong. We gonna figure that out after the fact. No question asked. My boys, my niggas, them they fighting hoes too. Y'all get wrong. Y'all get y'all. Y'all everybody getting beat up. Everybody <laughs> get it. Like leave us alone. <laughs> Just leave us alone. Cause it ain't no rules. Once you throw them, we gonna call. Once you throw them bottles. Once you do anything, it ain't no rules. So I'm letting y'all know. In so the, the chat was on that stage. We'd have seen you throwing hands. Y'all would have seen me throwing microphones because that's what I had in my hand when I was trying to see what they trying to do. Y'all trying to fight, you know, before I was trying to ask, not knowing that the fight had broke out. So I'm like, we finna fight, you know, I already had my microphone, you know, ready to just, you know. So, now nah, I wouldn't have been throwing hands. I would have been throwing the, the, the microphone. <laughs> 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 oh, I just heard a female's voice on the mic. Well, who was that? Was that, that was you? Because you said you had the microphone. Is that you or Gangsta Boo? That was Boo. I was the one after the fight broke up. Like I said, I didn't know it was a fight, but I was the one that was saying that, you know, they were showing out in front of the cameras. But uh, that was Boo saying that uh, Busy didn't take his pills. <laughs> 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 but the crazy part about it, that's just Memphis talk. You know, Memphis females, man, we gonna roast you. We got roast, roast, like roast, roast, roast. We make our dudes, we make the niggas be like, man, that's why a lot of females get beat up in Memphis because our mouth is like treacherous. Our mouth is worse mm -hmm. than a, a 40. Like real kill. <laughs> nah, y'all be going in down there. Man. Like y'all. Hey, you know, that's, that's the typical boo. Boo gonna talk crazy. And you see, you went on with, back to the show like nothing ever happened. You know, got back to the bag. Okay, so, so I got to ask you that because Busy, he came back. Mm -hmm. um, and ma matter of fact, before he came back, did they have like a, a mediation session behind the scenes? Did, you know, they pull Busy in the room with um, Juicy or, 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 or Paul or anybody and say, yo, we need to talk, squash this, and then y'all go back out? What was that backstage like? Nah, it was like uh, still everybody huddling up. 
trying to see what's going on or what they wanted to do. And then all of a sudden, Paul got the mic and said, you know what? We staged it. Y'all, let's get back to the money. <laughs> Crazy. Like a boss would do. And when he so, said that, everything just, just said, yeah, we straight, but fuck that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so the two sides in real time did not come together, shake hands, kiss each other, say, yo, I, I, I wasn't on my meds. Whatever. I didn't take my pills. Nobody did that. Paul just jumped up and, and made a boss move and was like, yo, this was stage. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, now the hugs and stuff went on as uh, everybody was performing and stuff. If you go back and look yep. at it, you'll see everybody was making up and shaking hands after a song, but got back to the bag for show and then made up during the showtime, you know. Everybody apologized okay. and all that. Yeah, I mean, um, I thought it was big. You was in that moment, but I thought it was real big of Busy to stand in front of the audience. He he just now messed the show up. It's, it's on him. He got to <laughs> eat that and own it. <laughs> but he did come back as a man yeah. and apologize and say, yo, I, I just want to apologize to everybody on both sides. I'm not trying to mess this up. Pardon me and keep the party going. Yeah, because I love Bone. We love Bone. We love Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like, for real, for real. Like, Never knew a gangster moment would come out between, you know, Three Six Mafia and Bone Thugs and Harmony because it's been our love. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's the way it felt. It felt leading up to it. Like, it's been love. I know um, they've been on records mm -hmm. with y'all. It's, it's, it's not like this same family. So it caught everybody off guard. Yeah. Um, they said the show got um, cut short. Paul said they had to leave out something like six songs after that happened and just wrap this thing up quick. Yeah, because a lot of time it got went by, you know, the fight was counted as showtime, you know, still on the clock. Still mm -hmm. on the clock, so you got to still keep it moving, then catch up with, you know, where you left off at. Whatever you pass between this time, you got to keep, keep the show going. Let me ask you, there is definitely been, I know it's all love and it's been all love. Um, Y'all been on records together, the whole nine performed together. But historically, there has been beef or innuendos of beef. Do you know how it even started? Well, I know uh, Three Six, you know, they always had the mystical flow, the, the tongue twisting, the fast rapping back in the days. Yep. And then when Bone Thugs and Harmony came out, they had the same style, you know, and uh, Three Sixes always say, you know, Bone them took the style from Memphis, you know, because we didn't know. We had never heard nobody else rapping like that. And so everybody rolled with it. Memphis rolled with it, too. We was like, all oh, Bone Thugs, Hunter, we ain't mess with y'all. Y'all took Three Six Mafia style, and, you know, we rolled with it, and we probably made the beef bigger. The Memphis streets probably made it bigger than what it really was because everybody got the island. Uh, fuck Bone and fuck Bone Thugs and Harmony. They trying to steal Memphis style and all that. But it was all young. They were way back in the 90s. Everybody so this started been got over behind, there. This actually started behind Y'all Stole My Style. Yeah, way back in the 90s, though. Ain't got nothing to do with a girl. Ain't got nothing to do with it. This, this is straight up that old school hip hop. Because back in the days, you know how it was. Um, one of the most worst violations in hip hop was biting my style. That That's what, and, and it's crazy because in today's era, you damn near can't even get a record deal unless you sound like somebody. So it all then came 360 and it hurts my heart because it takes so much creativity out of rap because soon as somebody pop, it's 50,000 other people going out there to sound just like them because that's they know that's how I'm going to get a record deal. But yeah. back in the days, it's just what you said. If everybody had to come with their own style and if somebody else even remotely sounded like them, it was like com committing a cardinal sin. Yeah, like we dissing you. It's going down. You still <laughs> my style, I'm dissing you. And like today, yeah, everybody sound like everybody. I don't know who is who. I'm just going to be real. Maybe I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know who is nobody these days. But yeah, back then, 
You got to have to get your own style, especially messing with Memphis. You can take any style except for Memphis style. In your opinion, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Who won that versus? Duh. We <laughs> did. Three, six, five, did. Ta-da. <laughs> Hands down. It ain't even nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about. Three, six, five. But Bone Thugs, um, they did a great job. They did a good job, you know. They did what they is. They bone thugs and homie. They showed the homie side. They showed the bone side. And then they showed the uh, thug side too. You know, so they 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 completed their mission. But we won the battle though. Three six mafia won the battle. So they don't get it's a as F. As that. They don't get an F. They get a, a C because they they finished, you know, but we get the A plus. Yeah. Okay, I already knew the answer to that one before I asked the question. <laughs> but for you, for you, I mean, this whole versus thing, it's now become a staple in hip hop. It's damn near a rite of passage. Like if you make it to that versus stage or you get that call, that's the call you've been waiting on. And it just brought fun back to hip hop. When you knew that y'all was going to do this historic versus battle. Like, how did how did it make you feel personally? And just what was the vibe like with the crew? Okay. Once again, I'm just a little old me. You know, my mind don't be thinking as big as stuff going to be. You know, I'm just a little humble person. You know, they said versus. I'm like, okay, versus. We just going to do the versus. I'm just thinking just a regular versus. I'm not thinking. I even though I didn't watch them all. But, you know, I'm just like, we got to do the verses. Get to the verses. You know, everybody crunk, laugh. I'm still like, we're doing the verses. You know, I'm back there drinking the Ciroc. I didn't get hot. So by this time, I'm pinning my hair <laughs> up. I'm still thinking, I'm at the club somewhere, regular club sound. Like, let's do it, you know. Come on. Come on out there. See the audience real big, major. And I'm still like, okay, we did the verses. Yeah, we did the verses. Yeah, all the stuff out there. Long story short. After the verses, getting on the plane, look check, look check. Everybody is like my name, bigger than what it was. Wait a minute, what this verses just do? Wait a minute. So I was like, I, I was lost with that too. Like, okay, now I get it. Now I can't go nowhere. Within the week, you know, I'm like, I go to Home Depot, I got the mask on, somebody put look check. We mess with y'all, we love y'all. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, everywhere I'm gonna like, hey. Y'all did y'all thing too. They gonna look check. Can I take a picture? Ooh, I'm like, versus. Okay then. Can we do another? One? Nah. <laughs> that versus. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a rite of passage right now. It's a staple in hip hop, and so many people they just love to see their favorites. Love to see artists that are not one hit wonders, but have. The, uh, 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 a catalog of hits and seeing back on stage going head to head against their favorites, hit for hit for hit for hit. So I could, I could only imagine being in your shoes. Maybe you didn't realize how big that moment was, mm -hmm. but for the fans, for people who have followed y'all's career for years and years, that was a big damn versus. Man. So who was your favorite guest that you liked that they brought out? I'm an East Coast dude, and for me, I just like seeing everybody back on. It wasn't so much about the guest appearances mm -hmm. as much as seeing the groups back together doing them classic hits. Because you got to remember, being on the East Coast, we didn't get a lot of Southern music or Midwest music until late. Yeah. So. Having 3-6 really break up on the East Coast, that was big. So we knew that music. We knew Bone Thugs um, and, and their music. And me working at Bad Boy for so many years, obviously when Notorious B.I.G. collaborated with Bone Thug and did the Notorious Thugs record, like that was big. So just to see everybody up on that stage, I, I don't know that I could say I had any one favorite guest appearance, yeah. I, I just liked the moment. Yeah, because, you know, when uh, 3 Six Mafia first came out, they was banned from a lot of places, too. So, 
you know, because they thought, you know, the devil worship us and all of those yep. stuff. So they was banned for, from a lot of places, but then end up, the world end up loving 3 Six Mafia. So I, 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 I know, I know that was big. It was big for me too to see that, but I just didn't know how big the verses was going to be. I didn't know it was going to like rearrange your whole life. Because well, that's what it did pretty much. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, because that's what it did pretty much. It's just like rearranged our whole lives. Like, yeah, for the good. I mean, the verses, verses is only as big as the groups and the artists that are in it. And I think for y'all being, it, it should be a reminder to yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, we made a hell of an impact. We made a mark that maybe I'm not even aware that we did. Because like I told you, I've been a big fan for years and and we up on the East Coast. So you wouldn't necessarily expect that y'all's influence and some of the records and, and some of the things you did, us just looking and seeing y'all all on stage, that's like reliving a part of my life. Yeah, because like me and Boo was talking and we was just, you know, overwhelmed about how everybody was acting about the verses. And she was like, that's crazy. And Chad said, well, you know, it just goes back to show us, Boo, you know, the reason why they signed all of us. You know, there'll never be another person like Gangsta Boo. Only Gangsta Boo can be Gangsta Boo. There'll never be another individual like Crunchy Black. Only Crunchy Black mm-hmm. can be Crunchy Black. There'll never be another individual like Lord Infamous. Only Lord can be Lord. There'll never be another person like Coop's the nigga. Only Coop can be Coop. There'll never be another person like DJ Powell. Only Powell can be Powell. There'll never be another person that can be like Lil White. Only Lil White can be White. Just like Juicy, just like the C to Six. Only Juicy can be Juicy. Only Pat can be Pat. We all some different. Can't nobody else be Lil Chatty. Let me, let me not leave me out. So... We all some different kind of individuals, man. You know, sometimes I look at everybody and be like, we some characters. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if they wish to make the cartoon, it would go platinum because there is nobody on earth can ever be neither one of us. You know, we just our own people. And that, that stage alone, we didn't have to rehearse. We didn't have to do no practicing or nothing because we already know what we're going to do when we hit the stage. You know, you see Crunchy you know when it's time for him to dance. You see, Boo know when it's time for her to come up. You see, I even know when it's time for me to come up. So we've been doing it for years and years and years, you know, without no rehearsal. Oh, you just you just said something. That's crazy. You telling me y'all did not rehearse for that verses? No. What we do, we just know what music, what songs going to be played, you know. But other than that, we already know how to perform. We already know who going to come out, how they going to come out. Because it's been the same thing, just chemistry. Great chemistry. You know, speaking of chemistry, it's so messed up that we're talking about a piece of hip hop history with these groups. Um, you know, and, and your crew in particular, three six, breaking up. You know, Juicy once said that the group broke up and he felt like it was behind drugs. Um you know, from heroin to meth to cocaine to all kind of pills. He said a lot of drugs was consumed during those times. Did you feel like that was a big part of the breakup? Because it's, yeah, I mean, everybody want to have a good time. And we've watched so many people lose their life, lose their their fortunes to drugs. Was that you know, and for, for Juicy to come forth and say, yo, that was, it's the reason why we broke up or we still be doing it. Um, from your opinion, for from your side, is that what put it in the 3-6? Well, I really can't say it because, you know, like Juicy and Paul, they the bosses, so they know everybody. They know everybody mm-hmm. as an individual. They know what everybody do and what everybody was doing. So to me, I thought, you know, everybody was having a good time, having fun. So it probably didn't affect me as much as I, you know, as it affect them or the business because I didn't see it. It was all fun and games to me when I saw everybody together and partying. So I didn't see it. So, you know, but Juicy would know. Paul would know too. They would know because they know. They know some behind door scenes, you know, that I don't know and that nobody really know. But they know if he said it, you know, it could be true. Yeah, I mean, 
Crunchy, um, he did an interview and he was, you know, he said it was a lot of drugs going on. They was having a good time, um, you know, definitely doing the cocaine, the lean, the pills. But he was like, I don't know nothing about no meth. Uh, <laughs> that was a little different. <laughs> That's what I said. Somebody might know something that somebody else don't know, you know, so I can't speak on it. All right. So let's turn our attention from verses for a second. You Memphis owned, so I got to go in a different direction for a second. Um, I recently sat down with Ed Lover, and Ed said something that was staggering to me. He actually said he did the research, and statistically, 51% of all rappers die of murder. They're killed. They don't die of natural causes. They're not going down in planes. It's not like they live to see old age. They die of murder. I can't talk about Memphis without talking about another tragic death that occurred, as you know, with Young Dolph. Mm -hmm. RIP to Young Dolph and his family. So I got to ask. Did you know him? Did I? Yes, yes. I know Dolph. Dolph is like a brother. Dolph is a friend. And Dolph also said that I was his favorite female rapper of all time. Mm -hmm. Dolph is a, a person I watch him grind. I watch him grind for a long time. Like they used to hit all the clubs when it was over. And you would see a young Dolph CD on the cars and stuff, you know, they passed them out in the hands. Even if somebody threw them down the anchor, every time after the show was over, he would pass out his CDs. He and me had a little squad. They were passing out CDs. I watched him grind. I watched him, you know, grow up to my son was like, uh, Mom, my favorite rapper is Young Dog. I said, Young Dog? I said, I seen this CD. I ain't heard them, but I, I said, I see CDs everywhere. I like, but I ain't never heard them. And so he had a show one time uh, on Brooks Road. And my son was like, Ma, you gotta take me to me. You gotta take me to me. I'm like, okay. So I got my son and his friend, and me and my brother started to make. We went on down there. Uh, Rico Owens had threw the show. He's a big promoter out of Memphis and uh, Greenville and Atlanta. So he had threw the show. And I told him, I said, Man, my son, a big fan of Young Dolph. I wasn't familiar with him, but I was familiar with seeing his CDs in his name. He, I was talking about he had packed it out too. It was packed. I was like, they come to see Young Dolph, okay. So once he got there, they let us in through the VIP, and Dolph was rapping on stage, and these people were singing this stuff word from word. So I'm like, okay, I'm lost again, but it come from his grind. You know, if you pass your CDs out, somebody stopped and listened to him somewhere, because everybody know the words. So he, he stopped the show, when Rico told him, he said, man, this little chat, and this is her son. He stopped the show, uh, met my son, hugged him, you know, took pictures with me, like, I say, this on stage now. This is what I'm saying. I think we still Rico Owens be posting that pictures kind of blurry, the one he got. But this on stage, he he really took time to stop the show, take pictures with my son and his friend and everything. And then, you know, I met him. I shook his hand. And I told him, nice to meet him. You know, congratulations on what he's doing. I fuck with him. And then, you know, he started back rapping. He started the show back. But from that point on, uh, he worked with DJ Squeaky, the producer, and he ended up calling me to come to the studio one day to do a song with him. We did the song, and uh, Squeaky lost the files, or Dolph lost the files. One of them lost the files, but Squeaky was saying that he couldn't find, and they were, I'm talking about the song was so hard, and Dolph kept on saying we were going to have to redo it, but we never got a chance to redo it. Uh, another time, uh, I saw Dolph, which was, no, three months ago, he just FaceTimed me. He was like, What's up, Chad? He was like, Chad. I was like, hey. He was like, man, look, don't tell nobody what I'm calling you for. I was like, okay. He's like, man, he had some producers sitting beside him and everything. He was like, man, we writing on this movie. He said, I got this role I want you to play. I want you to be the major uh, role in the movie. And I was like, okay, okay. He's like, you down? I'm like, yeah, I'm down. He's like, plus I'm going through these beats. We're going to do some more music, too. And I was like, okay. Then he was like, let me put you on my uh, IG story. You know, like, all right. The next you know, he was like, Chad, he was like, uh, you know you my favorite female rapper all the time, don't it? And I was like, you know you my favorite, don't it? <laughs> and he was like, all right, y'all be on the lookout for that new little Chad and Dolph, you know? 
And it just went from there. I've been waiting on the move. I should have put my feet on his neck, but you know, he'll text me, what's up, chat? You know, I still got the texts and uh, just be checking in. But he had dropped a new album with the paper out, uh, mm -hmm. Illuminati, and they got kind of busy. And next thing I know, tragedy. Like, what happened so fast? Like, like that? Damn. You know, it, and like you say, it is a tragedy. It really, really is. Um, you know, he leaves behind two kids. This is a man that, from everything we've heard of since the tragedy, you know, he has something like 100 properties in Memphis. He was given back to his community. It almost seemed like nobody had a bad word to say about this man. Where was you when you found out that he was killed, and just what's your thoughts overall on his murder? I was sitting on my couch, and uh, my brother started man called me. Was like, "Chat, they saying they just killed Dolph up there on Airways." I'm like, "Huh?" Like, "Yeah, they saying that." I'm like, "They they going live?" I'm like, "No, nah, no." Nah. I'm looking at the live. I'm seeing the car on live. I instantly started calling his phone. Like, "No, nah, this ain't Dolph. Dolph ain't I ain't up there on Airways like that." No, no, no. So. Phone just ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and ring. I'm like, wait a minute, he ain't answering. Then so I call Squeak. I said, Squeak, is it true? Is it true? He said, My chat, I'm on my way up here now. He said, I ain't gonna say it's true till I see it. I ain't gonna believe it till I see it. I said, Where you at? He said, I'm on my way up here now. He said, There's so many people up here, I can't get to him. I said, But is it possible though? Like, is it is it his car? Is it is he anywhere in the area? He said, My chat, I ain't gonna believe it till I see it. Like, okay, you know, so this time I'm praying, like, no, because like you said, this is a good man. This is a good soul. This is a talented person. This is a loving person. This is a caring person. And, you know, he never felt that he had to worry about being killed, especially in Memphis. Now, you might got to worry somewhere else, but you never expect to get killed in Memphis. Like, I don't even expect to get killed in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? So I know Dolph didn't expect to get killed in Memphis. And next thing I know, you know, Squeak called me back and was like, Chat, it's him. Damn. I, I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I broke down. I broke down, down, down. Like, y'all would have thought I had been seeing this man every day. I was glad that I was there by myself because nobody really wouldn't have understood it. It wasn't even about just being Dolph, it was just the situation, it was the principle. It was like, Wow. You know, I know he got kids. I know he got a beautiful family. And just him himself, that's Dolph. You know what I'm saying? So I cried. It took a lot out of me. You know, and I would have felt it ain't even have to just be Dolph. It could have been any one of our Memphians that put on for the city. You know, mm -hmm. we got a lot of people that's legendary, that's supposed to be good, stamped solid, and can go anywhere in Memphis, really with the key to the city, key to the streets. You know, some people, some members, people you just don't touch, you know. Let, let, let the legends be legends. Let, you know, we got enough haters outside of Memphis. At least let the people that's putting on for Memphis stay so we can keep on. Because Memphis winning right now, in my eyes. Yep. I feel like yep. Memphis winning. We got all the hot rappers right now. So it's like, y'all, let's allow, allow them to put on for Memphis. Allow them to be great. Allow them to keep making Memphis be great, you know. Save the one for the outsiders. You know, let our Memphians be here. The ones that's doing good deeds, especially. Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. Uh, because Boosie was saying, you know, most rappers, they get killed in their own hood. And was it anything that you could say? I mean, hindsight is always twenty twenty, But was there any feeling in the air? Like, yo, Dolph ain't welcome back here. He He don't need to be back in Memphis. Or him moving around the way he was, he didn't have security. He was out there with his um with the car, with the wrap, the camel wrap. Everybody know all of his vehicles had that same damn wrap. So if he's going down the street, it's it's hard to miss him. You know Dolph is here. Was there any feeling in the air? Like, yo, you just violated. You know you wasn't supposed to come back to this place. And now that you're here. We going to get you on site. None. None. Or he wouldn't have moved like that. 
or he wouldn't even been so comfortable, you know. But I said, he, certain people in Memphis or that's from Memphis, you just don't expect things like that to happen. There's a lot of rappers that's in Memphis that's, that's made in Memphis. Like, you can go anywhere you want to go. You're supposed to be able to go anywhere you want to go, you know, without nobody touching you because, you know, you one of the ones that, that made Memphis look good. You one, mm -hmm. one of the ones that they put on for the city, and, you know. I think the Memphians should respect that, but evidently there's some more stuff going on, you know. I don't know, but I love Dolph. Rest in peace to Dolph. Condolences to his family, you know. And like I said, I would have felt that way if it would have been any one of our Memphians that's been putting on, you know, for the city. I really would. You know, they have the memorial tomorrow. I'm going to be there, you know. Mm. And it's just a sad thing. It's a sad Is thing. anybody scheduled to perform at that memorial? Uh, They got some performances, but I'm not supposed to speak. I ain't, ain't going to do no performance, but uh, they got some uh, performances there. Got you. Yeah, it's such a tragedy. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I was talking with Benzino not too long ago, and we was talking about how in 2017, Dolph, his SUV got shot up. I think it was in Charlotte or something um, when it happened over 100 times. Then he got shot multiple times in L.A. And Benzino said, you know what, Prez? I just feel like maybe Dolph just just gave up. You know, maybe he just gave up. Like, let me go to this cookie spot. I know I'm solo. I know I'm by myself. And, you know, I'ma just let fate happen. Whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be. You talking to Dolph, and I don't even know when is the last time you spoke to him. I don't know if it was that IG live you spoke of. But was anything in him, um, did his vibe give you the sense that maybe he just gave up? I don't look at that as a man that gave up. I look at that as a man of God. You know, he was walking uh. on faith. And he lived by, you know, when it's his time to go, he go go. And if he go be here, he go be here. You know, when you move and you, you a praying person and you believe in God, you really feel like you don't need no soldiers. You really feel like you don't need no weapons because you feel like, you know, God going to protect you at all times. And we all know God make no mistakes, too. You know, so yep. even though we might don't understand and can't understand, you know, God, some type of way, you know, he just stepped in. And no way, no way would Dolph have given up. You know, he wouldn't have never given up. I just think that, you know, he just walked with God. And he walked with his head up and he walked with God. That's a dope answer you just gave. I actually love that. Um, you know, and that's really what it come down to. I think in all of our lives, you know, especially for people who are faith driven, you come to realize from the day I was born, there was a date that God had already set that I was going to leave here. So I might as well just live my life, live it to the fullest. Yeah. So I love that answer. Thank you. You know, it's been a lot of reports that it's been retaliation. Um, there was a comedian, and I don't even know if you know him, and I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, from um, a local comedian in, in Memphis named Damuni. And, you know, he put out a post saying, man, them folks just killed Dolph. Um, I love Memphis. We so gangster. And he had a pick with Yo Gotti. Turns out he's reportedly been killed. Don't know if it's in retaliation. Don't know if it has anything to do with that incident. But are people dropping that maybe the public just don't know about? Yeah, I just think, you know, the whole town is hurt. You know, I just wish the killing would stop, period. You know, we already got one major loss, you know, everybody need to mourn, you know, don't mark it, nothing, you know, don't don't crack no jokes, because it's sad, it's sad, you know, win or lose, it's sad on whatever side, you know, I don't, I don't see why anybody even, you know, even really speaking on it, you know, that type of way, because I wish 
all the killing will stop in Memphis. I really do. Memphis is a good city. Memphis is a great city. Like I told y'all last time, we get money in Memphis. You know, we we talented. Uh, we love and we kind. But we hate our ass off too. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Memphis ain't that city. We can't leave that out, you know. But I wish all the killing would stop in Memphis, man. We need it. We need Memphis. Memphis versus everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of Memphis, I got to shout out Yo Gotti. I thought it was um, a classy move, and I'm not sure that he did this for this reason, but if so, I think it's a classy move that he pushed back the release of his album, CM10, um, after the Dolph murder. Album still hasn't dropped yet, but, you know, They've had their back and forth over the years. And, you know, just so that it isn't looked at like, you know, I'm standing in the way. I know people are grieving. Let me just push my project back. And I think that that was a real classy move. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good move. Because that's just like me. I, I filmed my Slob on my Cat video 20 years later, you know, and it was scheduled to drop within that week. And everybody was mourning over Dolph so much, you know. I didn't want to take that time. I didn't want nothing to, to interfere with. I was still mourning myself. I didn't, it was Dolph time, you know. Let mm -hmm. Dolph get his time. Let everybody mourn and talk about Dolph, you know. Put him on up, you know. And let the city heal. You know, so I, I, I look at, I see, I can see God doing that, you know. God is smart. He, he be knowing what, what to do because it, it, it wouldn't have really made sense to drop during a sad time. You know, mm -hmm. right now the whole city hurt. So you don't want to get looked over. You don't want nobody to get looked over. You know, it, it was dog time, and I could see him pushing it back just for that purpose only. How dangerous are them streets down there? Like, Ooh. you know, Memphis is, and I've been to Memphis. Um, Memphis remind me of where I grew up, the South Bronx. Um, the South Bronx always felt like damn near a third world country compared to the rest of the New York City. But Memphis, I didn't really realize how poverty stricken it was down there. But just in terms of the violence and the danger, Project Pat once said something and it was real. He was like, yo, you could see a dude just walking down the street and pull up and be like, yo, I want you to go shoot at that house right quick. And the person would ask you, who's in there? You'd be like, yo, don't worry about it. Give them $200, hand them a gun, and they're going to go do it. Is it that real on them streets out there? Oh, you see, I had to pull my hair off my neck. You got to talk about the Memphis streets. I got hot. <laughs> <laughs> the Memphis streets are dangerous. You know, they they dangerous. They, they really are. And, I, you know, it's just, I think it was born. It might be something out of water or something. We got attitudes mm -hmm. like a motherfucker, like you mad, principal. Well, you can't even pull up back beside nobody and look at them. You look at them, you might get gunned down. You just might get gunned down. I ain't going to even lie to you because I, I ride with mine on my lap and I don't even, when I park, I park like this. So I don't even want to be beside nobody because, you know, you look over at me, I'm going to look over at you and then we're going to have a start off and it might end up in a shootout. That's how the streets go. You so know? when you ride and you got yours on your lap? My on the lap and my um arm conceal and in the seat or on my passenger lap. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I'm licensed too. I mean the gun laws down there are so ill that you you even need to be licensed down there? Like uh, they so laxed. They Everybody really don't, got but them. the the thing about being licensed though, when you get pulled over, you know, the police they don't run no guns or none of it. You know, you automatically stamp, you know, they they really like, what kind of gun you got? Oh, well, I got this type of gun. Well, maybe you should get this. Like, the police told me one time, well, maybe next time you need to get the 38 without the hammer on it. It come right out my pocket. My arm in the car like, what? This is the police? <laughs> yeah, so that's the difference between being licensed. Like, you can have whatever type of guns on you, they don't run them. You already licensed, you know, so it's already understood you can carry. Now, if you don't, if you ain't licensed, you can have it on you, but that don't mean they ain't gonna run the gun, which the gun can come back stolen or anything, and then you in trouble. 
So you can't mm -hmm, ride. They mm -hmm. say you can ride with a gun, but it got to be legit, registered, and all that. So that's the difference between a licensed uh, gun carrier and a person just carrying. Okay, speaking of Project Pat, he done had some troubles with guns. This man at the height of his career, he's locked up for four years. I think he was pulled over. It wasn't even like he was shooting at nobody. It was nothing like that. Mm. And in the height of his career, you know, he got to do four. I remember that. I remember it. You know, and then it, they used his, his lyrics, you know, against him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Pat didn't been through it, man. Pat a real OG. Shout out Project Pat, man. No, you got to shout out Project big, Pat. Big Project Pat. Big OG gangster. He laid yeah, it but down. you and him, <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this is a man that you, you, he was on one of your biggest hits, if not your biggest hit, Chicken Head. Yeah, that's, correct? yeah, that's his hit. That's his song. That's yeah. the, how did that record come about? Uh, so Pat came to me and, uh, he's like, Chad, I got this song I want you on. And I was like, okay. He was like, man, I'm, I'm going to roast you. You roast me. I want you to talk bad. Talk bad. <laughs> I was like, Okay. So uh, I went in the studio, I dropped my little boss, and he came out, and he listened to me like, oh, man, you went in. Then he came in, then he responded back to me, and there we had it. Never knew Chicken Head was going to be as big as it is. Yeah, that's a big freaking record. That, and speaking of him and big records, and this, you got to love this dude, Drake, man. Drake, Drake show up. I don't know what it is about Drake in Memphis, but Drake... New album, Certified Lover Boy. Yeah. And he got Project Pat. Like, you wouldn't expect that he would reach back to the triple OG and put him on a new song with 21 Savage. I think the record is called Knife Talk or something yeah. like that. Yeah, he did that. I know uh, Drake dad stay in Memphis. I don't know if he still stay there, but I know he was staying in Memphis. So I think I think Drake got some of that Memphis blood in him because you're right, he loves him some Memphis. Nah, he loved me. I mean, I remember before he jumped. I mean, he's the one who put or had the rest of America looking at up and coming rapper Block Boy JB mm -hmm. on that, that Look Alive joint. Yeah. And I, that wasn't even, a, that was just Block Boy's joint. And Drake heard it and just jumped on it. Yeah. Yeah, Drake got some of that Memphis blood in him. No, you check his lingo out too. He, he, he up on the Memphis slang and everything. He never fails. He never fails. Yeah, I don't know if it got in, you know, his father, I know at one point, you know, he lived down there. I don't know if he still stay down there, mm -hmm. but Drake loves something about that Memphis, man. Yeah. I don't know if it's the barbecue, if it's the <laughs> women. I don't know what it is. I think, you know, y'all know Memphis. Drake got this street in him now, y'all. He kind of fool y'all. Look, you know, he got to get the pretty girl, get the girls, for, you know, with the pretty boy look. But y'all can tell about them lyrics. Drake got that street in him. And I think, you know, people just love us Memphians. Some type of way, that gangster shit just turn folks down. They just love it. Like, people get excited. They see me tote guns and shit. Man, she tote guns. Man, she got pistols. Man, she got... Man, you see her teeth. You got... Like, y'all like, what? We ain't... This what we doing. They get excited. You get some people that get scared, though. You know, I was somewhere filming a movie, uh, talking about... I don't, I don't know if he want me to tell about his movie or whatever. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to shout him out. Criminal of mine, he working on this movie and stuff. I got a role in it. You uh, know, mm -hmm. when we came up, I, I, he was like, my scene was so real. And I come up my purse, I'm like, you need one of these? He's like, damn, man. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what's it, where that come from? I'm like, oh, I got five in here. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so hold on. You be moving like that. My. Imp I ain't got nothing but... Ten fingers in two hands. But, man, I'm going to try and use all of them. All, each finger if I had to. You got to, man. You got to value your life. You got to protect yourself, you know. My so motto is to die time, trying not to die. There you go. For real. You go. I'm going to die it, trying it, not to die. There, I love that. <laughs> I'm going to die trying not to die. For real. Talk that talk, chat. <laughs> <laughs> so at any given moment I pass you I need to know off rip she got that thing on her 
believe I got that. No, I got that thing. No, I got them things on me. No, that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no, that. And I, don't, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to shoot nobody. Please, don't do it. No. That's all oh, I'm asking. Man. <laughs> Nah, you 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 seem like a sweetheart. I um, am. You you just got that Bonnie and Clyde thing wrapped up in the one. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Before I let you out of here, you mentioned earlier that Dolph told you straight up you was his favorite female rapper. Um, it's another well-known artist from the A, Mr. Gucci Mane that wrote in his book that you was his favorite female rapper. How does that make you feel? Man, shout out Gucci, man. You know, once upon a time, I was supposed to uh, sign with Gucci. They was trying to sign me, you know. Uh, we never made the deal happen. You know, he got in the little trouble and stuff. But, man, I remember when I first met Gucci. Uh, my one thing about Gucci, Gucci is his biggest fan. Like Gucci <laughs> love on. Gucci. Like it's I'm talking about it's it's incredible to see this guy work. Like I came in the studio, uh Boo, my sister Boo had brought me to the studio. She had just did the trap girl and we finna do stick him up, you know. He was like, My, I got a little chat in here, man. I know I gotta come with some gangster shit for you, man. I know I gotta come with some gangster shit for you. I'm like, okay, he said, my I tell all my female rappers, don't listen to nobody but a little chat. <laughs> Don't listen to nobody but the chat. And uh, OJ Juice Man told me uh, they half a brick, quarter ounce, whatever. Hey, he was like, my, my Combs to Bricks uh, song made him come up with that. He was like, he wasn't doing nothing but bumping me. And so shout out OJ Juice Man. And, uh, you know, Gucci, when I dropped my verse, like, Gucci freestyle. Like, he freestyle. He don't write. He don't write. He go in the studio and he, you know, he start rapping. Rapping, uh, you know the procedure when I see a heater. When mm -hmm. you see a heater, it's like he'll stop and he like, wait a minute, wait a minute, take it back, take it back. And then he'll catch on, catch on, catch on this thing. You know, he got a verse. You know, another time we was uh recording on a drummer boy beat, and he's like, Ooh, wait till y'all hear this. Ooh, the chunk's so bump. I'm talking about he was like, I'm like, okay, he's so Gucci went in there, he was bumping. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Gucci is his biggest fan. And as long as you're your biggest fan, you gonna win. That's why he winning. And shout out Gucci Mane. I, I be seeing him, and I can't believe it. You know, he got a baby and a wife, and I be like, look at Gucci. Go, Gucci. I remember nah, them Gu days. Gucci done grew up on us. Man, I remember them is, days. He's a grown man. Grown, grown man, man. Hard, hard worker. He got a nice heart, too. You know, he cool dude, too. Every time he came to Memphis, he say, chat. I heard you the person I need to holler for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, why do everybody say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, shout out Gucci. But shout out sh shout the shout the Gucci. Shout the OJ the Juice, man. I'm glad you brought him up. Good brother right there. Yeah. Shout the hip. Uh right now, it's crazy though. And again, you know, this hip hop thing is something different. Four Gucci's artists currently locked up. And I don't even know if you have any relationship with any of them, but Pooh Shiesty locked up, um, Fujiano, Rallo, Young Mal, all locked up. And from what I understand, Fujiano just today, while he's locked up, just got hit with a couple more charges. What, what do you even think about that? Like, well, you got to look at it like, Gucci a real street nigga. So, mm -hmm. you know, you gonna attract what you is. So he attract street niggas. So that means he gonna sign street niggas. Like these niggas streets for real. They they ain't just rapping. And it shows. Don't don't think they don't wanna get in this trouble, but you can't take the street out of them. You know, you know how they say you can't take the hood out of them, you can take it out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. You can get street niggas and street bitches money all day. You cannot take that street out of them. You know, mm -hmm. and I basically feel like they locked up because they just some real street niggas. They ain't just rapping. You know, and, and you, you can't take it out of them. And ain't nobody mad at them, you know. Nobody can't knock them because, y'all, we knew they were street niggas. They, they, they ain't had it. They ain't ashamed. They basically telling us they street niggas. 
And then sometimes, you know, you have to put that talking, into, that action into place sometimes, you know. And, you know, freedom guys, man. Freedom guys, that's all I can say. I'm, yeah, freedom. That's all, freedom. you know. they just street niggas. Street niggas. They ain't did no wrong but been them. That's all. Mm -hmm. Real street niggas. <laughs> well, chat, it, this has been my pleasure. You know, I enjoy sitting down, talking with you. Love your spirit, love your energy, and love your little sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, can't wait to see what you do next. And by the way, what are you doing next? What's, what's next up for chat? Well, basically, you know, I just wake up every day and I think of what I'm going to do. I just do it. You know, I'm going to uh, drop. A chat weight project, that's something that I'm putting on for indie artists. I've been doing for a whole year that I review indie artists on my live and stuff. I'm talking about the list be long. And I do it every Monday and to show them some love back, I'm going to drop an album out, you know, with them on it. And I'm going to drop some music too. And I'm going to do some movies. And I'm just really having fun. You see, I just re reunited back with Juicy uh, yep. at a show. Shout out my girl, Shade Shine. She booked me, Juicy. And uh, Crunchy, I believe, on the show, and me not knowing that, you know, that I was going to be able to actually bump into Juice because you was Juicy, you know, on stage and gone. And, man, I couldn't believe it. You know, I seen I cried. You know, the, you know I was crying. <laughs> I cried. Yeah, I was so excited, you know. It had been so long. It had been over 21 years since I talked to this man. I hugged this man and heard him say, I love you, little sister, you know. And that meant a lot to me because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be right here today because he even brought me to Paul. See, I was Juicy Rapper. And so even by him just bringing me to Paul and they, them both making it happen, if he wouldn't even brought me to Paul, I wouldn't be here today. So that meant the world to me. I want to dive into something you just said. I can't let you walk up out of here before I ask. It been 21 years since so? you and Juicy? Get out of here. It been that long? It been that long, 21 years, because like I said in the last interview, pretty much when I, you know, asked Paul them to let me go, uh, when he let me go, you know, they was they just went on, went on being busy, you know, being 3-6 Mafia, doing what they was doing, and I was just being chat, grinding out, and never had an opportunity to bump into them, never had the chance to bump into them, you know, Never had, and Sade Shine booked the show, shout out her, and dropped in Missouri, and it, it, like a dream come true. I know that sounds crazy, but hey, I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. <laughs> I got feelings too. So <laughs> it was like a dream come true, and I, you know, I was so excited, because I remember, I remember the grind. I remember after uh, being just connected and, me beeping him, I used to beep him, and he'd call me back, and I'd be saying he raps to him, he'd be like, yeah, yeah, you bumping, you bumping, you know? And when he finally came on back in the studio and stuff, I remember. And I really felt like by me doing a larger situation, I really knowing what was going on, that I had let him down, you know? I really didn't care nothing about the status. I really didn't care nothing about, like I said, the money. I didn't go broke and start asking. I just felt like, you know, I was supposed to be getting checks from the album because I was still getting other money and other checks for the other projects. I just wasn't seeing it from Murder She Spoke, which, you know, mm -hmm. led me to believe that it had to come from the record company that I was dealing with. But I felt like I had let him down because he, I was so determined and he believed in me and I felt like I had let him down. So like I said, I was sad about it, but we made up 2021. 2021 has been a great year. No better way to end it like it's been ended other other than the deaths, man. Rest in peace to all the losses that we had and prayers for all the families who have lost someone. You know, we praying for everybody. Pray for our city, pray for the world. Absolutely. Um, you know, the fact that y'all didn't see each other in 21 years, both of y'all are healthy, the fact that you able to, to be booked on the show with him. It's almost unbelievable that in 21 years, it wasn't a promoter out there that was like, yo, you know what? We need to put them both on the same bill. Mm -hmm. Like, how dope would that be? Right. But to put your arms around them and, and y'all embrace and you to look at your big brother and just tell him you missed him. I know that that must have 
really made your heart feel My, good? I, I just was melting. Like I said, I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. So I was melting. Like, I just got weak, weak. It made my day. It made my life. It made my, it, it brought me closure. I wouldn't care if we ever do music again because that one it was one about, you know. Like you say, we older, we healthy, we here, and we alive. And, and if it weren't for that man right there, Juicy Jordan Houston, y'all would never know Chastity Little Chat Daniels. Mm. We'll leave it there, girl. I mean, <laughs> let's leave it on a high note. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it right there. Thanks so much. Um, I appreciate you coming in. Loved your energy. And I'm looking forward to big things from you, girl. But thank y'all for having me. Thank y'all so much. Peace and love. Peace.